Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. My name is Danny DeLillo. We're here at Emerson LA. I'm delighted to be joined with David with his movie, Angels Landing. Let's take a look at the clip. It's almost seven. We should get to the hospital. Nick, let's go. Yeah, uh, yeah, you should go. It's good. Nick, come on. Let's go see Dad. Nicholas! Come on! David, thanks for joining us today. Thank really, you for really glad me. to have you. Um, and it's so nice that you were here uh, from, from USC but saw other films with, uh, with uh, our previous alumni, so thanks so much for being here. Um, for those that haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, so the film is a five minute short film about two brothers who are reconciling after many years apart at the iconic Angels Flight Railway in downtown Los Angeles. Um, and you know, it's the eve of their father's death at the hospital, and the little brother has been estranged from the father for many years, and I wanted to tell a story from essentially both brothers' perspectives about a minor, you know, encounter that has huge repercussions for you know the past and the future of the relationship. So. Yeah, I mean, it was again, it's a short, short film, but as you know, I said to you, it's just so much I felt in this emotion of obviously both these brothers of what they were obviously going through, and then set in this iconic Angels Land, set in the iconic Angels Land in a you know prime part of DTL at a prime part of DTLA in Los Angeles. And even just the way that they were all walking up the steps, like it was just the trials and tribulations and the pain and the worry, it was just all kind of symbolically was wonderful together. Where did the inspiration come for you in creating this project? So I did this project as part of a fellowship called the Visual Communications Armed with a Camera Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And you know, for this fellowship, they've done it for 20 years now. Um, they've done a really good job in curating, you know, rising Asian American talent mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, the story, you know, I wanted to tell a story about L.A., first of all, and I wanted to tell a story about Angel's Flight, because that's one of my favorite landmarks of, in all of Los Angeles. I think Los Angeles is so underrated in terms of, you know, historical landmarks. I think people yeah. talk about Hollywood, people talk about the beach, you know, the mountains, Beverly Hills, but downtown is where it's at in terms of, you know, the crossroads of, of uh, the old world, so to yeah. speak. You know, the East Coast, the sort of like, you see in the Art Deco, yeah. the, the architecture, you know, the, the art, you yep. know, the nature. Um, so downtown's this interesting confluence of old world and new to me, and yeah. Angel's Flight has always been just like such an object of fascination for me. And I think, you know, I was walking those, up those steps with um, my wife, you know, one night we were about to go get food at Grand Central Market, and mm -hmm. I was thinking, I want to make a short film up here. You know, it's not just picturesque. I, I feel I feel a lot up here. You know, there's yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of buried emotion. I think uh, just in walking up the steps and looking up the high rises. So it's so true. I mean, I, one of my favorite landmarks too. I used to live in downtown LA, and I love the Grand Central Market. It's the best. I can more smell it. Um, but like, it is a very there's a feeling up there, isn't there? Angels Landing. Like, I can't describe. Anyone's not been, you have to go because it really does have. A, a, there's a lot of feeling up there. It's an incredible spot. Um, let's just. I mean, firstly, the great. Obviously, this wonderful fellowship's been going twenty years. That's brilliant. That you know, you got to make this film. Um, but let's talk about your cast because. Like, to talk about something that's, that's so obviously personal to these characters and a horrible situation they both to come through, both are strange, both are different directions, live in different places. Like, the every, like there was so much in these characters. I don't know what is going on, LA, but you need to just start because I've got David right here. There, is, there was just so much emotion and such wonderful acting performances for them both. Tell us a little about how you brought your cast together. I love my cast. You know, I love working with actors. That's my favorite part of directing. Um, and George Tsai, who plays the older brother, he's pretty much my alter ego on screen. I've worked <laughs> with him, I worked with him, you know, three or four short films now. Uh, you know, I want to work with him on a feature project, you know, and definitely feature projects in the future. Um, George and I just clicked from the get-go at USC, you know, I cast him for a short film. We, you know, we're at a point where we can finish each other's sentences, you know, Ugh. just there's shorthand there. Yeah. Um, 
he gets he gets it. Uh, he inhabits these characters. I think like exactly how I see them, and even more, even beyond mm -hmm. that. Um, so George is amazing, and so I think it was a no brainer, you know, for me to cast him as the older brother. Um, the younger brother, you know, went through a quick audition process. Uh, my friend and fellow filmmaker Christina June uh, mm -hmm. helped me find some actors, and um, it was a tough call, but. For this particular role, Albert Kong was 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 the man. I mean, I think, you know, I had seen him in you know several other Asian American indies mm -hmm. uh, like Soul Searching, uh, where he you know he's he's just phenomenal. He has such a presence, um, just his way, uh, his his voice, you know, his yeah. body language, you know, the way he inhabits you know strength and hurt at the same time. Um, so when he came into audition, I was like, well, you know, y'all not not only look somewhat alike, mm -hmm. so you could you could pass as siblings, but you know, you have that, I think, wounded energy that, you know, that I was looking for. Yeah. This. So I had them do a chemistry read and everything clicked and I was like, this is the one. My goodness, like I could just see just in the way they're performing and their characters, just that they're just, their lives had gone on like completely different journeys and it came across so well on camera and you really felt so much in these few minutes through these circumstances of their father. But for you personally, like, what is your kind of direction in terms of like how you work with your actors in terms of rehearsal, if people play, like, what's the story for you? So I love working with actors. And I think, you know, the biggest, I think, alchemy that happens for me um, is definitely starts with rehearsals, with the, you know, rehearsal process. Um, for, it depends on, you know, what, what kind of scene it is, you know, if it's more action oriented, you know, then, the rehearsals will be more physical and technical. Mm -hmm. um, but in a scene like for Angel's Landing, for example, where it's more character driven and yeah. a little more subtle, uh, you know, I do see the dangers of over rehearsing. So yeah. what I did for this particular project was I, I just sat them both down, you know, did a quick table read and we went through the script line by line, mm -hmm. you know, figured out the subtext. I had my version of the subtext. I always open it up to them, always, mm -hmm. because, you know, as actors, they always bring a wealth of not only acting experience, but life experience. Yeah. You know, I'm younger than both of them. Yeah. So, you know, they're like my big bros. So, yeah. you know, I'm always open to anybody, uh, you know, bringing in their take on the character. So yeah. it really just like, you know, grows from there until we get to set, you know, separately, I've already figured out a shot list and a game plan, you mm -hmm. know, with my cinematographer and then you know, and then we just roll, we just roll. And, and you know, not much changes uh, from, from, you know, rehearsal to set, but some, some things do, you mm -hmm. know, depending on, depending on what we're feeling in the moment or mm -hmm. if George or Albert wanted to try something new, um, then I'm like, let's do it. Let's you know, do it because again. usually I take, I use the first or two, well, you know, I use the first or second take to, you know, get what I was trying to go for. Mm -hmm. And then usually my thing is, you know, the last take, or when I think we're good, you know, I don't tell them to just do it again for safety. It's more like, let's do it again, try anything. You yeah. Know? Let's do something. Let's, let's do something crazy. And oh, like, I let's, love it. Let's, let's see what happens, you know. And uh, it's not just for, you know, to get options in editing. It's just, it's honestly just to keep the, keep the set in a good totally. pace and a, at a good vibe. Let's play, you know, and yeah. Have, let's play a little bit, yeah. So. Well, I'm just so curious. I mean, I, I could see so many films in downtown. I'm with you on that. I love the old and new and the historical part of it as well. I'm just curious, when you're filming a landmark like Angel's Landing, like was there any challenges in filming that? I mean, goodness me, I'm sure you had to watch filming up those steps. Like what, was there any experiences that you had? Cause I was thinking about the person who was directing this and your crew. So part of the fun part about playing, uh, sorry, I'll start over. Yeah. Um, so one of the fun parts about pl filming at uh, Angel's Flight Railway was you know, definitely the location itself, you know, not only just going up the steps, you know, f having the actors sort of get familiarized with the location, but mm -hmm. also, you know, the Angel's Flight itself is a, a trolley car, you know, that yeah. goes up and down every five or six minutes or so. And, you know, it was fun to also like feature that in the background mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, and, you know, just have the passengers in the background as well to fill in the yep. space, you know. I've had a couple of people see it and be like, Oh, you, you, you managed to get some extras for it. That's pretty cool. I was like, those aren't extras. Those are... I love it. You know, those are just real people. Those are Angelinos and tour yep. tourists, you know. Oh, good job. Uh, but, yeah, it's one of those, like, little, you know, production production quirks yeah. that worked out. And luckily, we don't really see their faces. It's blurred out. 
no rights issues. Well, you're so obviously early in your career, um, you know, and it's exciting past for you ahead. What kind, what are you excited about, and what kinds of films you want to make in 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 your, in your future as, as as you embark on this career? I think I'm really excited about telling stories about um, Asian Americans and people of color that not only, you know, feature them as leads or feature them as important characters, but also humanize them and you know tell down to earth stories. You know, let, let's let's you know. Asian Americans are Americans, right? And like they're just as American as, as you or I or anybody in this room. And I think you know, Angel's Landing is just a small piece of that. Um, it's representative of what what I do want to do, you mm -hmm. know, um, in terms of as a director, character-driven pieces. Um, but not just limited to that. I mean, you know, as a Angelino myself, you know, I do want to tell stories about the city. You know, mm -hmm. not only not only you know humanizing you know people, but also humanizing the city a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a fascinating city that has so many unexplored corners and you know wherever this filmmaking journey takes me you know i know at my heart i'll always be angelino so i want to see every one of your movies you got me all excited now this is really cool um is there anything you're working on next or what is next for you yeah i so right now uh i've i'm working on several projects with my production company um, i started a production company with my wife uh, who i also met at usc we're both oh, filmmakers awesome. And um, right now I'm in pre-production on a feature film, an indie feature that um, I'm producing mm -hmm. uh, with my wife about a Korean American adoptee in small town Virginia, um, who's you know, on this journey to discover her birth family after her uh, birth mother's death. Oh wow. And so it's, it definitely fits the fabric, I think, of the stories that I want to be a part of, which yeah. is, you know, let's tell stories about America, you know, where we're normalizing and humanizing POC. You know, yeah. in all different kinds of professions and social classes and, you know, economic levels and all of that. So I'm working on that. And, so exciting. Um, yeah, thanks. And you're working with your wife and keep it in the family. I love keep it. Keep it in the family. Yep. Yeah, yep, that's yep. fantastic. Well, yeah. congratulations to both of you on creating your production company together. Thank you. Um, that's really exciting. And just finally, like, you know, again, I, I always get so excited when, you know, you've obviously got such a clear vision of the types of films you want to make and, and obviously starting out and make a production company. I'm just curious for any other emerging filmmaker out there in our audience, you know, have you got any kind of um, advice or things that you go by to sort of support people on their journeys? My only advice really is to just learn from your fuck ups. I mean, you yes. know, everybody's, everybody's gonna fuck up. I fucked up so many times. Yeah. And like I will continue to fuck up, you know, just learn from them, you know, because that's the best way to learn. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to all the filmmakers out there, including me, you know, on this journey, I mean, movements, you know, s movements are just for critics and historians, you know. Stop seeing yourself as a movement so much and just see yourself as an individual and, like, know the value that you contribute to, to this world as an artist. You know, don't worry about what story's been told already. It hasn't been told from your perspective yet, you know. And that is the big thing that I had. I tell myself every day when I create, mm -hmm. you know, every story has already been told, yep. but it hasn't been told by, your, by you yep. uh, specifically. So just keep at it and learn from your mistakes and all is going to be good, you know. Dave, you just inspired us for the rest of our day. Thank you so much. That's been amazing. Now, listen, thanks so much for bringing your film to us and thanks so much for, um, you know, your wonderful advice and in what you've experienced in this particular film. And, we're looking forward to many more of your films, but thank you for Anthony Filmmakers LA. Thank you, it's an honor to be here.